I definitely think the way that we look at ourselves affects the way that other people treat us as well. I mean, there's the way that others see us, but at the end of the day, if we see ourselves as one thing, it's clear to other people. We portray it in the way that we talk to people, and the people that we approach, and the things that we do, in the clubs that we participate, and through that we create this image for ourselves. And when people see that, they sort of understand and they try to decide how you should be treated and whether or not to approach you as a person. So I definitely think that that has a huge role to play. We come here because um, the school looks visibly professional. We've got kids dressed in uniform, kids who come here and want to do all sorts of uh, extracurriculars, research projects, ways to help the community, and that's not something that you find in a lot of other places. So by, by sharing you know, our identity, in part through the uniform, um, we, we come together as a school, we become more connected and more bonded than you would in another place where it's real easy to look at someone's clothes or look at someone's hair or look at someone's shoes and say, you're different than I am, you're not the same. But here, we get to sort of share that identity, we get to go through it together. And I think, I think that's an important part of growing up and it's an important part of the culture at RHU. Um, I would describe myself as, right now I'm a teacher at RH King. I teach math, science, as well as family studies. Uh, before this, I did a degree uh, from with the University of Toronto. I did a degree in biochemistry. Uh, to describe myself, I'm just very passionate about the sciences and math and hope to help students uh, feel that same love and passion that I feel. Okay, so I would say there's two specific moments that really helped me make who I am today. Uh, I would say grade 12 is kind of when I realized that teaching was really a passion for me. Uh, so I was looking into university programs and trying to consider all the options I've had. Um, I had a lot of pressures, I guess, from parents in my community to do engineering or becoming a doctor and it was really not my passion uh, so choosing to do teaching was kind of one of the biggest moments of my life. So as a former student and a teacher now at RH King Academy, uh, some pieces of advice that I would give to maintain this sense of community uh, is, well, right now we have students and it's always been students who are committed to both their academics and extracurricular activities. Uh, we have a lot of students here who are just willing to participate, go the extra mile uh, to improve their school life as well as their community life. Uh, so just having motivated students and students continually willing to participate and staff to support these students uh, will help to continue to maintain that community. Uh, so I was a student here and participated in several clubs and councils like HCERT, uh, KEC, etc. Um, so coming back as a teacher, I was welcomed by the staff here. Uh, it wasn't a difficult transition whatsoever. If anything, it made it a more human experience in the sense that I was able to see the other side of teachers. So the teachers here are willing to put their best foot forward to supporting their students. Um, so as long as we have the wonderful staff that we have and students who are continually willing to work with their teachers, uh, we can easily maintain this positive community. I wouldn't say I'm the best version of, my, of myself, but I'd say I'm a very good version, um, only because I believe in growth. Uh, so this is my first year teaching, so there's a lot of things that I'm learning like every single day. Um, there might be a lesson I do first period and then I modify it for second period because I found different ways to express the same information in a much better way that better uh, resonates with my students. Uh, I am a son to two amazing parents. I'm an older brother to a somewhat nice sister. <laughs> I am someone that works hard. I know what I want to be. I know what I want to get out of my life. I know what I want to be in the future. I want people to see me as a hardworking person who is dedicated to their future goals. I don't want people to see me as someone who slacks off and who doesn't really care about school or their future goals. 
Knowing to understand myself means knowing my strengths and my weaknesses, knowing my likes and my dislikes, knowing my sole purpose in my life. I do believe I am still discovering myself as I do get older. I am still finding my strengths and my weaknesses and stuff that I like and I dislike. Just finding myself, exploring, trying new things. At this stage in my life, I do feel like I do know myself quite quite well enough, but I, as I'm getting older, I'm still learning new things about myself. So I'm much more of a materialistic thinker. I like to put materialistic things over personality in some sorts of way. I believe that my choice of clothing and my um, idea of fashion goes over my personality. It really portrays who I am. I do believe I am a good person based on my previous experiences. I try my best to take life not for granted and I always try my best to give back to others. Like even when I first got my job and I got my first paycheck, I gave my uh, first paycheck to my mom and dad because they're always hard working and they're always sacrificing for me and my sister so I thought it would be a good idea to give them the first paycheck to do whatever they would like. So I do seem to feel lost when I fail to know what I want from myself or truly understand myself. I am starting to see myself put on the shoes that I want to see myself in over the next five to ten years as I have been in a number of films and TV shows, music videos, commercials, just because of all that work that I have been able to put in with the help of my parents over the past year or two. I want to be the first person in my line of blood to be financially free, not have to worry about going to work a day. I want to work so hard that I can retire at the age of 25. I can say that I've made it. I want to say that I'm successful by the age of 25. I feel like I have to be this successful because this is something I have, it's not I should, it's I have to give back to my parents because they have sacrificed so much for me. They have worked day and night, they've sacrificed their well-being to put me and my sister in school so we can be someone success we can be somewhere successful or someone who is successful and that is also something that i want for myself as well uh, what's identity to me um well i feel like literally that's who you are right but also there are a lot of layers that make up who you are for example your outer appearance um, how you choose to express yourself outwardly tells a lot um, about who you are. I mean, we all know the quote, don't judge a book by its cover, but the thing is, even like the cover can tell you a little bit about what's inside, right? And also, just your thoughts and opinions, uh, right? Because they make up your core values, and your core values um, ultimately decide how you conduct yourself in your environment. I feel like my experience with bullying has definitely, uh, it revealed to me what I was like um, and it also made me realize that I need to make a change in my character because going forward this, this attitude isn't going to cut it in high school and I used to look down on people who join extracurriculars and I was like, oh those people are so preppy, they think joining extracurriculars will actually get them somewhere but what I didn't realize was that that like hatred that um, like how I detested those people it was actually because I was jealous of them I was jealous because they were they were doing more than me and I feel like because of that um, when I made that that uh, decision to change who I was after I experienced that bullying I was also like okay I'm a bully but there are also things that I should change about me besides how I treat other people. I should also change how I treat myself. Maybe instead of looking down at people who are doing more than me, look up to them. That's why I feel like in high school I decided to do all the things that I wanted to do. The way that I present myself to friends, I want like the way that I hope that I do present myself to friends is that someone who like is easy to talk to and someone who can hopefully brighten up your day. I feel like what's expected of people is to obviously shift who they are slightly to match their environment. I feel like everyone does that, right? Um, we're kind of like chameleons um, and judging on our environment, we're gonna shift 
how we behave, whether it may be more, um, more composed or more relaxed, right? Um, but I feel like when it gets to the point where you're so dramatically different that people see you as um, a different person in front of one group or by yourself, that's when like things get a little iffy because that means that who you are and what you believe in is not really what you're presenting to the rest of the world. Well, I could identify myself with many identities. Um, I was born in Poland, so I would identify myself as a uh, young Polish boy. Then I moved to Canada when I was 17, to, so up to then maybe I would identify myself as a Polish teenager. And then I, can, I came, when I came here, I was still identifying very much as a Polish teen living in Canada. My new identity was being a first generation immigrant. Eventually, over time, I was becoming more and more Canadian, so that was my new identity. Um, and that evolved over time. So um, right now, I'm, you know, I live in the city of Toronto, so I kind of will identify myself as an urban dweller. Uh, I'm a husband. I, um, what else can I say? I'm a, a dog person now. Now, I used to be a cat person. Um, so yeah, so many identi uh, identities and one of them of course is uh, I'm a teacher. Right, what is my approach to teaching? Um, I always start with a person, I always start with the student that I'm teaching, so I always start with the class, so I kind of first assess who is in front of me, uh, what type of class I have in front of me, whether it's applied, academic, locally developed, and so my net met methods change. Um, some of the methods will stay the same because they're good for any type of a student. But I always start with, uh, with their needs and then try to uh, adjust to it. So try to use variety of them. So I address all sorts of students. Um, for example, I will do some labs, mini activities, group work, pair work, anything that engages a student. And a very important thing is to make sure to make uh, real life applications. So scenarios that can kind of apply to. How does teaching have an impact on me? Um, I think big impact. I, I always, uh, I probably think as a teacher, I'm always um, aware of my position. Uh, I know that I have to be a role model for my students, so um, I act according to some of the rules um, that were laid out for my profession, and then I think I acted um, I, I'm always aware of how I act in, inside this building or outside the buildings because I can. I always do run in, into former students or current students, so I have to kind of upkeep um, my attitude, and the way I conduct myself uh, in the public. Um, so, also I think another thing is um, it makes me younger because I do interact with young people so that youthfulness rubs off and uh, I'm more maybe current with teenage culture. Uh, so that's a good thing about being a teacher. How do I want others to view me? Um, important thing is that I'm viewed as a person who is compassionate. Um, I love interacting with people. This, maybe this is the reason why I'm in this job. Um, interactions with, uh, with people are very important to me. I. Uh, I, um, I, this is my happiest place. It's my happiest place to be with people, around people. Uh, I like to be more curious about people, so that's something that I will work on uh, to try, you know, engage people in more stimulating conversations. But uh, yeah, um, yeah, I would like to be seen as someone who is sympathetic, empathetic to other people's needs and care more and just engage them. And, and that may be, be being by being, um, but just saying, doing small things for people, like getting them coffee or saying small, nice things for people just to make them uh, happier in the day. So what defines me as a person is my humor and my ability to make people laugh and have a good time. Uh, I see myself as a very goofy, 
um, friendly, someone who can get along with other people kind of dude. Um, I see myself as someone who can be there for people when they need me, as well as someone who can make people laugh when they're feeling down. Um, I see myself as needing to help people and making sure that they have someone there for them because I know that it, it doesn't feel nice when there's nobody there for you. Um, I think others perceive me as funny, um, outgoing, I'm always talking to people, I'm always giving hugs, um, I'm a very huggy person. Uh, I think people really see me as someone who just wants to be with them, like I, I always want to be with you, I always want to show you that like I love you and all that, that's just how, that's how I think people see me. I think others perceive me as a goofy hyper person which sometimes can be bad, but a lot of the time it's really fun. Um, sort of times when stuff that other people wouldn't want to do, I'll do it. And uh, I think that makes me a fun person and people see that in me. Um, of course, what made me the person that I am today is my mom. Um, without her, I just, I, I wouldn't be the same person. Um, she's taught me everything I know. She's taught me to be a better person. My my personality is completely based off of her like and I uh, I look up to her and I enjoy every minute with her uh, something that makes me feel very insecure um, are when people leave me uh, like I've had examples where I've had like a really close friend this really one of these really close friends they left me and I felt like I was alone and that the whole world is staring at me and so I felt very insecure about that. I felt embarrassed because I had no one to go to. I was like, I felt like everybody would stare at me. And yeah, for for a while it made me a very introverted person. So like for a few months I just wouldn't talk to people. I'd be by myself. Um, but I've been able to overcome that and become, or go back to that person that I was before that. Um, there's been plenty of moments where I felt insecure, um, but it's just something that um, you have to work at. A moment that I might feel insecure is when I have to present something in front of a class, and um, I'm, I get really like shy. I know I don't seem like the shy type of person, but it can be really difficult, and um, you just have to work to overcome those. Who am I? I am a very goofy, excited, crazy person who always wants to have a fun time, even if it gets me in trouble. I still do it because I love it. And my friends love it. I love being a class clown. And I uh, just really love, I guess that's just me. I don't know. <laughs>something that is always changing. It is something that is not fixed. It is something that is different depending on what context you are in. It is something that you have for yourself and it is something that, it is also something that people have of you. So you might self-identify in one way and people might identify you in another way or the same way. So it's internal as well as external. No, thankfully it isn't. Thankfully it's something that changes all the time because if we had to have that identity, one solid fixed identity our entire lives in every social situation, that would be really bad. We have to be able to change it. And we have to be able to be seen differently in different contexts because different contexts require different parts of ourselves. I think the way people act in public can change the way that people see them. Um, you know, the difference between somebody, somebody's hair who has it worn in one way versus another way, they are seen very, very differently, unfortunately, right? We shouldn't be judging books by their cover, something that we're taught our entire lives and yet we do it. We ascribe meaning to haircuts and where pants are worn, right? Are they low? Are they high? Right? Like, People look at guys with their pants down like this and they're like, they make all these assumptions about who they are and what their values must be and that's all obviously not true, right? You talk to anybody whose pants are 
down low and they don't all have the same goals and values in life. So, but I think that a lot of people see those things and if people want to change how they're seen in public, those are things that they, things that would change how they are seen in public. King, King has one identity that I see being sort of promoted. It is the academic school, it is the leadership school. I often hear teachers saying things like, um, how is it being framed? Um, this is not King behavior. These are not King values. And while I understand where that's coming from, it really gets me sort of, it kind of gets my back up a little bit because I wonder, well, they're King students who did those things. So if they are King students, is this not part of King's identity? Is this not part of who King is? Can King not have a diverse identity? Can we not be many things at one time? I've been to so many different schools, nine including King, and I've seen different ways that schools sort of choose to self-identify. And there's one school that I was at that had a really strong not leadership program, but like an advanced placement program. And that was a really big part of their identity. But they also had this amazing um, culinary arts program, which was geared to college kids. That was also a very important part of their identity. They had a really strong dance program, which is very not uh, you know, related to, to those other two. And then they had this amazing spec ed special education program. So they had all four of these groups, very diverse, made up of very different students. And these were all core tenets to their identity and it felt like kids had a place to fit into that so much better whereas at King I feel like if you don't fit into the one model the leadership academic model you're not part of King and that makes me feel really sad and and I feel like I teach family studies so I'm often teaching those kids who don't fit into that academic model and they're often really like not engaged with King and Maybe if we adjusted how we thought about ourselves, maybe they would feel a little bit more at home here. How do I see myself? Again, I think that I see myself differently in different contexts. So I have like my, I call it my teacher hat. So I put on my teacher hat when I walk into the building and anything that has gone on the day before or that night at home or that morning at home, I just have to put it aside and put on my teacher hat and be a teacher for the day. And then when I go home, I get to be, I get to put on my mom hat and my partner hat and do that and when I go out with my friends it's a friend hat I think there's different identities that I put on throughout the day but I think there are like certain things that are like unchangeable about me I am uh, a white uh, woman so there's not much changing that I very much read as heterosexual so there's that we call that cisgender I am um, I come across that way I am solidly middle class although my roots are working class so those are some of the like unchanging things about me. It depends on who is viewing me, how those things are read though as identity. So I think my friends and family would describe me as kind of a weird person because I tend to say a lot of wrong things at the wrong time, if that makes sense. Um, I guess in a way that makes me sort of funny because like sometimes I get a laugh out of it. Um, also, I think they'd say I'm caring and loyal and all that good stuff. All right, so role models. Um, I wouldn't say one person specifically when it comes to role models, but um, one thing that one of my cousins always told me was, look at the best qualities of certain people and try to incorporate that within yourself. And so I guess in that sense, um, I'd say like there's a lot of different people whose qualities I admire when it comes to different things. So the place that I feel the most comfortable is um, when I'm surrounded by family or close friends. And that's because they're just people that I can trust, people that I can talk to about things that need. So I feel that identity is your own view or description of yourself. And I feel that it's unique for everyone. Um, it can include like your qualities, your race, your sexuality, whatever you want to put in there, but it's pretty much how you would describe yourself. So if I was to change one thing about myself, um, I try to be more outgoing because I'm kind of an introverted person and so I'd like to develop my communication skills and maybe uh, gain a little bit more confidence as well. So uh, I'd say the things that make me the most happy are things that really allow me to relax and enjoy myself but at the same time um, 
things that allow me to be creative. So for example, I like making music, which kind of just lets me be me, but at the same time, um, I can express some ideas through the music. And so three words that I would use to describe myself. Um, one of them would be lazy. I'm just not a very hardworking person. Um, the other one would be helpful. I tend to help people as much as I can. And also I'd say that I'm a good listener. Um, I feel like people can talk to me about whatever problems they have and I can kind of give advice on their situation. Hmm. The question of identity being permanent or ever changing is an interesting one. Um, I would, uh, I, I believe that it's ever changing um, because as we go through different phases of our lives, um, there are different things that we're involved in, there's different experiences. Um, we go through different cycles in our lives from being students to being um, you know, involved in a particular workplace. Uh, even within uh, a particular occupation, the nature of your job can change uh, over time. Uh, the nature of your relationships with individuals, the nature of uh, you know, your family life, things are constantly changing. So I think identity is constantly changing. If you'd asked me in grade 12 and in grade 13 um, if I was, you know, what I was interested in doing after high school, uh, I wouldn't have answered educator as, as a first response. I had some other things that I, I thought of, uh, like law and journalism, but it was that experience that I had working in the summertime with young people, as well as those mentorship and parental influences that led me to make the choice of, of uh, exploring teaching as a, as a career. And I'm really glad that I did. Starting with my mom, my mom was a teacher. So, you know, I grew up in a, in a, in a, in a, in a household where, you know, there was a lot of value placed on education uh, because my mother was a kindergarten teacher most of her teaching career. Um, I had friends whose uh, parents were, were teachers as well and um, I always looked up to them. Uh, one of them was a, a high school vice principal and principal. And so, you know, he was a good mentor for me, not just when I was, you know, a young, young person before I was even in high school myself, but then as a young adult when I became a teacher, he was a mentor when I was getting started in my teaching career. Uh, I think many things affected uh, the way the community views the school. Um, certainly, uh, the leadership program, the school is very well known for the leadership program and that enhances uh, the school's uh, profile. Um, I think the decision even before leadership became associated with R.H. King, but the decision to rebrand the school as an academy and uh, have the uniform uh, as part of the school identity, uh, that those were things that also change the viewpoint of the school in the community. I think the important thing in any school, R.H. King or otherwise, is that the school can be many, many different things to many different people. And that there's diversity of op opportunities in the school at R.H. King as there are in, in every school. So that no matter what a student is interested in, they will find something to be a part of in the school. And that's really, really important. Uh, I don't think that it's the place of the school to you know, ensure that there is just one identity. In fact, quite the opposite. I think that it's the place of the school to ensure that the school can be many different things to many different people. Identity from grade 8 to grade 9 changed drastically for me because going into high school you always think like oh it's like high school musical everybody's dancing on tables and like everybody is very cool with each other but really that's not how it is high school is way different from how the media portrays it and how what I grew up with in the media and it's all a matter of really looking around at how other people behaved with themselves and how other people were comfortable with themselves that really made me rethink my definition of identity because before I was just thinking like oh it's how you view yourself but it's really how you view other people and how 
people view you. Isolation is a very iffy subject when it comes to face my identity because it's not really a matter of other people isolating me, it's me isolating myself from other people. For the past few years, I've just been trapping myself further into the closet because I am terrified of being rejected for who I am. Even internally, I've been rejecting like, hey, what if you're not this person? Or what if you're not who you thought you who you thought you would be. And growing up, the only way the LGBT community was brought up in media was if there was something super controversial with it. But now that's being brought up in the more light, I've been feeling more open about myself and more open about who I am as a person. But growing up, you didn't really see a lot of positivity for it. Challenges I faced with coming forth with my identity was just a big matter of fear of rejection. Growing up, you didn't, in the media, you didn't really see a lot of diversity. Nowadays, it's very common, but growing up in like the early 2000s, you didn't see it very often. So I was just really scared that, hey, I wouldn't be able to fit in anymore. And people that I love maybe wouldn't love me back for who I am anymore. Growing up, thinking back at it, I never really used the name Patricia. It was always some form of nickname, so Trish or Trisha, or even the annoying Patty, which I absolutely hated growing up. No reason why, I just didn't like it. But when I started going by Pete, it, it felt like there was a weight on my shoulder that just got thrown off because I always felt limited by the name Patricia when I was starting to question myself. And I felt like going by Pete or Peter now was really just a breaking point in how I really saw myself and how I was comfortable living as myself. Recent challenges have arisen as I started questioning my gender more, actually, because a lot of my friends bind. A lot of my friends who are trans or are non-binary also bind, and a lot and some people that I've met take tea, testosterone, and are and are doing surgeries. And frankly, the, it sort of scares me, such a drastic change, because how will my family react when I haven't even come out to half of them? Uh, how will I afford it? How will I stay healthy? Because binding it gives you huge lung problems and I already have enough lung problems uh, if you saw me in gym last year yikes <laughs> um, but it's all a matter of it was just it's terrifying really going through such a huge change and even now I'm starting to doubt myself like what if I'm just a really dramatic straight girl still and what if what I've been doing for the past two years is just a lie and it's just a huge internal struggle with thinking about how my future will be. Advice to anybody struggling with the identity would be it's always important to put yourself first before worrying about others. It's all a matter of figuring out who you are when you look in the mirror rather than who you, who you think you should be for other people. Like, hey, I'm Laura, I'm a hockey player. Now it's, hi, I'm Laura. So to me, identity is who you are and what you perceive yourself as. So it's, it can be what other people see you, but to me, identity is more of a self thing, not what people see. Um, so other people play a huge role, especially in high school, because we do rely on our friends a lot. Um, I've seen it firsthand, tons of people turn into strangers, because of the people they hang out with. They change their whole identity just to fit in. I know a lot of my friends see me as an athlete, someone who's always busy, never really has time for anyone else but themselves. Um, outside of the classroom, I am very introverted because I just really don't want to inconvenience anyone. Um, making plans with people gets me like, gives me a little bit of anxiety. It just kind of stresses me out. Um, I'm usually studying or just relaxing by myself. Sports has always been a huge part of my life. Ever since I was, I think, three, my parents had me doing like gymnastics and then I went into soccer, baseball, hockey. They've just always kept me busy. 
and I feel like it has actually kind of helped me become who I am. It's taught me hard work, taught me how to balance my time, how to become like a very motivated and hard work and working person. Knowing who you are really helps with like the actions and your behaviors that you do and knowing who you are really plays a big role in what you become in the future. If you know who you are, you know what your goals are, your motives, you just know what, what and your morals. Um, I wasn't making the best choices in grade nine because of the people I was hanging out with. Um, I was very self-conscious and I just couldn't really be myself because of the people I was hanging out with. Um, more of an introvert now and I'm more okay with it than I was before. I was trying to force myself out of my comfort zone thinking that would be what's healthiest for me, but it really isn't. Um, now I have a really solid group of friends. I'm more confident. I love King. I'm not scared anymore. I feel safe here. So over the years I've definitely kind of become more comfortable with my identity and who I am. When I came here and I like I met everybody and like I really felt like I belonged and I really felt like I fit in for once, you know? Just go! Okay, um <laughs> how would you see yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Just go! It's a, a high school is a high school is a high school. <laughs> it's not gonna be some perfect thing all the time. The Sumi show is going to see this and going to know how you much you're fooling around. Now just get it together. Just get it. <laughs> 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 like, yeah, I think that we all preach about being unique and being like different, but then when people like try to be unique, then it's like your player? shunned down upon and like you can't do that. Well, I'm... I'm... Can you pause it? Can I even do that? If you want something to get better, you have to work for it, and you have to take steps yourself, and you can't just give up on it. And I wasn't... I wasn't about to give up on myself just because somebody else thought differently of something I'm doing. Right. <laughs> My friends and family would describe me as quiet and chill, but if something's like out of place, I would speak up about it. I... I forget. What was I supposed to say? 